from Krima Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. The Pretoria-based Council for Scientific and Industrial Research has developed a learning factory geared towards upskilling people for the fourth industrial revolution. This factory showcases various robotic systems, augmented reality, the incorporation of Internet of Things and automation, among others. Learning Facility Project Manager Dr. Shanil Davraj speaks to Krima Media Contributing Editor Donna Slater about the Centre. I'm Shanil Devraj. I'm a Project Manager for the Learning Factory here at the CSIR and currently we're in Building 17A where this, the Learning Factory is being housed. Technology grows at an exponential rate and our mainstream education systems focus on developing uh, competencies that are quite rigid uh, and they aren't able to adapt to the rate of growth of technologies and they evolve more at a, a linear rate when it comes to um, the education um, or skills development side of things. And what we see then is a resulting skills gap because technology grows exponentially and education systems grow linearly almost or evolve at a linear rate and that skills gap is where we hope the learning factory can add value. The outcome of what we want to achieve is providing an environment to facilitate skills development and innovation um, for uh, research, design, and more importantly, the operation and implementation of these technologies. To give you an example, a small child nowadays can operate a smartphone and go into YouTube, but he doesn't know how the phone, he doesn't need to know how the phone works. He just needs to know how to use the phone. Similarly, what we want to do is create a similar type of training environment where even uh, a very low skilled uh, person can adopt a new technology and implement it in their work environment. The purpose of the Learning Factory then is threefold. Um, the first is to demonstrate 4IR technologies and we want to look at specifically technologies that are related to specific industry pain points. Uh, in saying that, the learning factory itself must be industry-led. It, it hinges on the fact that we understand what is happening with industry and we understand what issues to address in that environment. Uh, and the technologies and skills and competencies that we develop in this environment must talk to those pain points in some way. We also support uh, the CSIR itself with research contributions. Uh, and obviously in doing so, we support the, the greater country needs. Uh, and we also look at opportunities for applying for our technologies across different sectors. So, for example, uh, if we have the automotive industry uptaking technologies quite rapidly, uh, can we then look at applying some of those technologies to an environment that doesn't take these technologies as rapidly as the automotive, for example, agriculture or mining? Can we adapt that to those environments? And that's what we would also look to support. The factory employs a vast array of fourth industrial revolution technologies to help learners and users better understand the fundamentals of modern hardware, software, and what happens in the background during its use and implementation. The factory also has elements to enable anyone passing through it to understand risks posed by modern technology and how to overcome them. We also look at supporting the building and leveraging human capital and the key here is that we will train on 4IR technologies. We've identified 10 key technologies such as augmented reality, artificial intelligence. But more importantly, we look at training using 4IR technologies. So if we have, for example, a plumber, his work is doing plumbing work, um, but, the, but the technologies he uses changes over time. Now they can do non-invasive leak detection, for example. How do you then equip somebody with the skills to adopt these new technologies? And that's where we see 4IR coming in, in terms of the learning factory adding value. Um, the other example is where we have a welding um, application, and I'm sure you would have seen that inside, where we use artificial intelligence to perform inspection of a weld. Now, what that means is we've used a FOIR tool to assess whether or not a weld is conducted uh, appropriately. That's an offspring. The, the actual contribution from the learning factory there is the development of that application. But we can use that application to reach thousands of students from one expert who's an expert in welding versus now that same person reaching only 10 people per day. Uh, so through this app, he can then reach those, those thousands of people. And that's an example of how we use 4IR technologies to assist in training. The last uh, contribution is that we support research and innovation across the CSR and industry. As I mentioned before, the CSR consists of nine clusters 
and we support each of them with 4IR technologies or skills development in this 4IR technology such that they can go and create the change in their environments. Some examples include that we've instrumented the chemicals cluster with Internet of Things uh, sensors and they can remotely monitor their production facilities. A significant part of the fourth industrial revolution is about robotics and automation, an aspect that forms a large part of the learning factory. Davraj talks more about this. Uh, then in robotics, we look at different levels of robots where we are able to develop our own types of robot arms and we are able to work with open source robot arms, but more importantly, we are able also to interface with robot arms that are found in industry. Uh, for example, this robot arm here would not be found in industry and somebody coming and training on the system would not uh, you know, gain any value in terms of understanding uh, how to apply this in industry per se. But if you show them this arm, then they have an understanding that when, what they see here, they'll find out they're in industry. So then we have a, a smart home as well, which I'm assuming you would have seen. Um, and the purpose of the smart home is to uh, demonstrate that we uh, can instrument a home environment or business environment with Internet of Things devices to facilitate uh, remote control of this environment. And it's to make things convenient, for example, uh, you heading home from work, you've got rice on the stove, you just from your phone click that I'm coming home now and then the rice starts to boil by the time you get home your food is your rice is cooked. These devices in here are commercially available. Our contribution comes in where we try and integrate it in a systems level um, where we look at developing this dashboard of the power consumption and we try and predict uh, as FNB has a navigate your money and it tries and predicts how much money you have at the end of the month, we can look at what your, your spend will be at the end of the month with regards to electricity and water. And if there's any anomalies in there, perhaps there's a water leak or there's some leakage somewhere in terms of power, something drawing excessive power. So it helps you with that type of uh, application. But this can also be applied to businesses as well. Now, this is the starting point of us getting into the energy application side of things. One of the areas that we are going to look at as well, including in the near future, is uh, the NCPC, the National Cleaner Production um, Center, it has a training course for optimizing energy usage at different plants. And they have a rig, a test rig, a practical rig that they use for training purposes. We are going to instrument that rig uh, such that it can be remotely monitored and controlled, and the students can be taught remotely in that. And uh, in doing so, then we get access to the energy side of things in understanding their curriculum and uh, facilitating that through the learning factory as well. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.